It's, it's not bigoted to look at this and say, actually, these people seem to be going to the top of the list when some of our, some of our own are struggling. Well, but I think it is bigoted because when our own are struggling, which they are, that's the government's fault. That's not the refugees' fault. That's not the asylum seekers' fault. Their anger needs to be... It's misdirected. You can't create an asylum seeker problem and then blame them for this government's failings. 13 years, we've got lack of housing, lack of doctors, lack of... Uh, our mortgages have gone up, our rents have gone up. That's the government's fault. That is not the asylum seekers' fault. Stop blaming them and creating hate. And that's what this government are trying to do. They're creating hate. They're creating a target so that everybody who's brainwashed or bigoted, they've got their, they've got their chance now, their green light, to go and pick on them. They're the reason for our problems. They're not the reason for our, fault, for, for our problems. The reason for our problems is this government's lack of help, lack of housing, lack of schools, lack of um, doctors, everything. The government's fault. It is the government's fault. It's not the fault of the asylum seeker. When it comes to certain opportunities, migrants do tend to get these things as opposed to British citizens. Some British people here in the UK who do not have home to rent or to, or to buy, you know, they can't afford it. So instead of the government actually focusing on these people, they're actually focusing on these migrants. You know, these migrants come in immediately. They're provided with a with a home immediately. They're provided with funds to actually rent a property and, and whatnot. Now, I'm not saying that that's exactly what I believe, but this is a common argument that a lot of British people bring forward. They believe that when it comes to migrants, they they you tend to get a lot of stuff compared to the average British citizen. Today, you have individuals, you have British people who can't pay the rent, can't pay the bills, can't pay their heating bill, can't pay any of these things, you know. So it's not right to just blame migrants, immigrants for all the problems that this country is going through. But at the same time, we need to realise that if you're constantly allowing people to come in by the thousands every day on boats, through Calais, it's going to have a knock-on effect. I think the government's fault, it is the government's fault. It's not the fault of the asylum seeker. How can you blame them? Patrick, do you think Narinda might think you were bigoted or brainwashed in all of this? Oh, well, I do hope not, but I certainly believe that uh, the duty of a government of a nation is primarily to its own citizens and that the citizens uh, deserve prioritising. But they do deserve prioritising. Right. Well, However, doesn't... both can exist because yeah. the asylum seeker also has legal rights. Well, well look. That's they have true. legal rights and, and we have legal things. obligations. You, you, you make some valid points about there's not an adequate housing stock for this country, but in fact there's more housing in this country than there's ever been, right? No, we've there got isn't. About, yes, we've got about two million more homes than we had at the turn of the century in the, the last 20 years. The Tory government have failed listen, to listen, build listen, more well, housing. You can say that, but what's happened is the size of our population has roared on ahead of the extra housing capacity. That's now, not it's correct not a matter either. of blaming individual people who just want to improve their lives, right? I agree it's the responsibility of the government to set the framework. But what we have here is, is yesterday a cabinet minister talking a good game from, from the perspective of people like me about it's not right, it's not fair. But why is it we not have, right we, we have, Why is listen, it not right? We have more than 50,000 foreign nationals overwhelmingly arrived in our country illegally who are there are day, no who, safe listen, routes Patrick, Patrick are you, are creating, there is, there are you are creating you are creating division and there hate and people for Ukraine, that's not, Hong Kong, but not for Afghan, Syria, not Afghanistan for all of them, had, no, had there scheme, are no safe routes did. and if there's that's no safe routes, true. please don't call, cause division, please don't call, cause look, racism, look, I get you, told to F off back I to my own country daily and you are creating division if you let me get a word in edgeways what's causing division and what's undermining our race relations are when ordinary fair-minded members of the British public look and see we have 6,000 homeless veterans people who risk their lives doing good work across the world right and for our country and whose uh, fault right, is that well look the, the housing stock is not big enough to keep bringing in loads more so you're people, gonna right? blame so right right there's so many homeless people and it's November now Next month is going to be December. It's getting extremely cold. Now, can you imagine the amount of homeless people out there who are freezing? Some of them might, may very well end up freezing to death. I'm sure there are plenty of, just like the gentleman said, homeless veterans. Of course, you've got young people, young British people. Some of them in, in their teens out there freezing to death. They deserve homes. They deserve places. They deserve a roof over their heads. So, so for the government to just be focusing all their attention 
on on migrants to me it's, it's a little disappointing when Rishi Sunak was actually prime minister there was all this talk about sending illegal Im immigrants to Rwanda he didn't end up actually going through with that plan now we have a new prime minister Keir Starmer and you know many people believe that he's actually allowing more immigrants to come in so a lot of people are annoyed a lot of people are very very angry with Keir Starmer which is why recently there was a petition for another general election and and that petition has well over two million votes so a lot of people are not happy with how this country is being run now i don't actually believe this petition is actually going to amount to much but i think realistically it's going to make Keir Starmer realize that a lot of people are not a fan of me so maybe that might influence his decision making when it comes to certain things like migration the housing stock is not big enough to keep bringing in loads more so you're going right? to blame so vulnerable asylum housing. seekers you're blaming I'm them not, as opposed uh, to blaming the government I'm literally not blaming that's not fair I'm no, but the issue is here and it's all about the language some are asylum seekers some are migrants some are illegal migrants. Some? Right. Right. So but, we but can't... We, but we do know there are a lot of illegal migrants who are coming over in small boats. Now, there isn't... You're right, there is an issue about safe routes, and that needs to be looked at. But in the meantime, these people are illegal, so they... they and then no, they're coming no, here illegally. No, but Steve, let, so let's process so the you, claims quicker. So let's process yes, quicker. You, you, you can't victimise. You, you can blame people for saying... You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be paying mm. smuggling gangs. You shouldn't be doing that. But if government can deal with that, we can process these claims look, quickly. Lorinda, the, government what we choose, have at the, moment, the government choose not to, Patrick, because they want to create a target to right, divert listen, away from their failings. What we so have how at the can moment, we how can we divert away from failings? Let's yeah. let's what, let's tune into those Lorinda, bigots and blame the asylum seekers. What we have at the moment is people who've come mainly from a safe country, France, but under under a, a, an outdated asylum system, but nonetheless that says if you're fleeing in fear of your life, other countries must take you in, right? And these people who allegedly fearing, running in fear of their life are complaining about being moved from a four-star hotel to the sort of accommodation barge refurbished It's a floating refitted. prison. It's, it's a floating not, prison. Actually, I think okay, it, it should be secure okay, detention, Patrick, but it's shall not. We do they're this? they're shall escorted we put them off. In tents? Shall we put them in tents? Will that make you happy? Will that make people happy? Because this is performative cruelty. I don't want to see anyone want to in see tents. The first, people, the first person who went onto that barge said, oh, it's really nice. And the second person said, actually, I feel like it's a prison. I'm scared of being on here. So actually 15 people have got on it from 50,000 people. I mean, let's do the math. Yes, let's do the math here. Stop blaming vulnerable people. And yes, there may no, be no, hold, some. Hold there on a may hold be on some. A who what about this? We had people emailing in the other day, saying, because this is, uh, what we're talking about is the rights of British people against uh, people from other countries. Why are we, why are we p pitting them against each other? Let's not pit, let's look up but we, but we Resources had, are we had scarce. someone email in the other day who said, my daughter is homeless, she's living with me in a mm. one-bedroom flat with her child. She would love to be on the Bibby Stock And I feel for her too. I think that we, both thing, things can exist, both things can coexist, and we, as a government, they can deal with both. No, if you ask me, I don't think there was anything really wrong with the Bibby Stock on. I would have called it a prison. I mean, you had a roof over your head, there was something over your head. You were safe from the elements so this idea that it was a floating prison i mean it was warm yeah it was protected you know um i'm pretty sure they provided you with food and clothing you had a bed you had a bathroom <laughs> what more do you want what more do you want so this idea that it was a floating prison to me is just completely preposterous surely if you're fleeing a war-torn country a, a, a boat that's actually protected Surely that's better than being in a war zone. You know, so the idea that it was a terrible place to be, to me, is just completely ridiculous. And you just heard what the gentleman said. That you have a mother and her small child living in a one-bedroom flat with her own mother. She would have loved to have been in the baby stock home. She would have loved to have been in her own room. Beggars cannot be choosers. If you're fleeing a war torn country and then you're provided with a safe room, a safe place to stay, you can't be complaining. You can't be complaining. Things can exist. Both things can coexist. And we, as a government, they can deal with both. No, they should be as, dealing as, with both. Yes. How do we solve this problem that Narinda has correctly identified, mm -hmm. that people are being pitted against each other? And how do we create a situation whereby we aren't putting Brits at the back of the queue, but equally we are treating people with dignity? 
Right, well, what we've got to do is manage our population so it doesn't exceed the capacity of the state to provide public so what are you services about accommodation. The number of children people can I, I, have? I think we need uh, massively to reduce and have a quota for the number of asylum applications we will accept in this country. And I agree with the idea that no one who arrives illegally should be allowed to stay. Patrick, but I then personally we think the accommodation barge at Dorset should be secure detention. I don't agree with buses into town bringing 500 young men into a seaside resort. You're creating division. Right? You're actually well, creating, you're talking such colourful language happened. that's incorrect. Not, there are, you're quite saying quite keep them inside in a floating prison. They're not allowed outside. That's cruel. And to, that's no, actually I, been cruel. No, no, People are on, detained on, until they're, they're, the, the merit of their application for asylum is That can take three decided. years, so you want them stuck on a floating prison for up to three no, years. Like it you make, you're making no sense, with Patrick. Deportation so up to quicker. three years they can be stuck on this boat. And you know this argument where people say, well, it was good enough for the oil rig workers. They're on it for about eight weeks. Processing is taking one to yeah, three years. Processing needs to happen a lot faster. Correct. Everyone would Everyone would agree with that. But it's not about pitting people against each other when... You know, if you have 500 people bossed into an area, the local population are unhappy with that. And you can mm -hmm. understand why it's a 500 young men are suddenly... Who said it's just area. young men? It is, and it also, is. Every is single men. person going on that but, barge but, will but, be a young man. But actually, that barge, 500 people, it's only, the capacity is 222 people. And it's a fire risk. The fire brigade have said, this is a disaster waiting to happen. No, do that's you want that? Yeah, those it's issues have been sorted out. But which still, is why but do you really want people, 500, even if it's 500 men, as we keep saying... You're making arguments about last week's OK, but even if it's 500 people... 500 men, mm. do you really want them to be stuck on a board 24-7 for three years? Is that correct? No, I would like them to be back in their own countries. And, they how, arrived and, in our and ask illegally. the government to do that by processing it quicker yeah. and actually creating safe routes. Because if they did that, problem solved. It's actually quite simple instead of creating hate. Because well, I think what, it's horrible. What, what would you then be in support of getting them to Rwanda to be processed? Because I mean... That no, because it's costing too much money. This is costing too much money for the British taxpayer. Yes, of, I, I'm a taxpayer. Part of, issue, part of this issue with the barge and trying to use it is to try to get people out of hotels, which is costing a huge mm. amount of money. All so what should we do? Put them in tents? How, what, how should we do? We put them in tents? You say to put them in tents with, with that sort of derogatory tone, but there are thousands of British people every night, not even with a tent And on whose the fault because is that? Because our housing capacity is under such strain, we're a crowded country. How she keeps on going back to the huge pool. Is that well? You can't blame the government for every single bloody thing. You know what I mean? Like the government is not responsible for the dynamics that go on within a family that might end up pushing someone out into the street. The government is not responsible for every decision and life choice a human being makes. Constantly blaming the government for every single thing is ridiculous. Sometimes you need to take personal responsibility. Now, obviously, most people are not homeless by choice. There is a small proportion of individuals who would rather be free and live their life freely and not have to worry about societal norms. There is a very tiny po population of people who are like that. Obviously, not everyone's like that. I'd say the vast majority of homeless people are not like that. but. Like I said, I just think you can't blame the government for every little thing. Sometimes it is down to personal responsibility. So, you know, she keeps on reverting back, whose fault is that, whose fault is that? That's not, that's not answering the question. That's not solving anything. That's not solving anything. That's just pointing the finger at the biggie man. And whose street. fault because is that? Because our housing capacity is under such strain, we're a crowded country. Patrick, the housing, Getting houses housing, built is very difficult. housing is under such capacity because the government didn't build enough. This is the failings of the Tory government. It's appalling L what they've Labour, done. Labour I know what they've done is create hate. This. And I feel sad about that because as a woman of colour in this country, I get told to F off back to my country daily. And Lee Anderson has just given a green light to all of that. And actually, vulnerable people coming in, yes, there probably is some people who are illegal and they're doing it just to play the good sum but let's not pick on the people who are actually genuine because I think we're better than that as a country well, you know the British people I truly I believe it's the scale are better. of this influx that's undermining what were very good race relations but in this country. But we're not going to be able to change the scale of the influx are we? I mean it's a global problem well, we're no, seeing I, most European I, countries I think we, we could. higher numbers we than could. we are in the United States but I think you've, you've had discussions on your programme already about essential steps as in withdrawing from the European but Convention Patrick, and the UN uh, Refugee Convention 1951 
ages and ages ago, different world. Patrick, we, we we've need had a, one a million governing legal. party that's prepared to do that. Patrick, we've had one Tories million are. legal migrants. One Absolutely. million legal. Single year. So what, what's happened to your capacity of schools, hospitals? Exactly. Why, is, why, is the, why do we pick right. on the asylum seekers and not the legal well, million? Look, two what's roles a million? That make a right. The legal immigration volumes is an even bigger problem right. of pressure on public well, services. That we have shortages of people doing jobs and we need migrants to come in and do that. Exactly. And that's what the Chancellor of the Exchequer said. Why not let them we work? People to come in and work. Let them work. They're desperate that. to work. That will work. just draw okay. millions more people in. If you allow asylum seekers to work and earn money, it's a massive extra pull factor. We cannot. And our economy needs that, that, Patrick. Set. It oh. doesn't. Our economy, our economy needs, needs inactive it, Brits. Our economy to has get always into survived market. on actually migrants. Our economy has That's thrived on immigration for, for years, no, hundreds no, of on years. On that point, basis, you just open the border, wouldn't you? No, but look, no one's saying we just open the borders. Yes, Nobody's they are. actually saying uh, that. People, a lot but we of certainly the need the workers because that. British people do not want to clean the toilets, they don't want to pick the fruit, yeah. they won't do it. Just this look at the country, banners, no borders. You know, everyone welcome. The, no, we don't do that, Patrick. Again, yes. again, you're exaggerating, and again, you're creating some kind of division. The left because in this no country, one says open these borders. Days doesn't believe in borders. It believes that's in, that's incorrect. In, in, we, in do, we do we do believe in borders. That's we have to have borders. That just makes sense. That's common sense. We need borders, okay. but we don't need people creating you division don't want borders and being hate. Enforced, right. Well, mean? we've got to leave it there. A lot of people in this country are struggling. You've got homeless people, you've got people who can't pay their rent, you've got people who can't pay their bloody taxes, you've got people who cannot pay their bills, you've got people struggling to, to, to get an appointment to see their GP, struggling to get a referral to the hospital. So many issues that British people are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously, if you're constantly allowing migrants to come in, especially illegal migrants to come in, it's going to put a strain on all of these services. It's a difficult issue. I'm never going to lie to you. It's a very, very difficult issue. So it's not going to be solved easily. But guys, let me just leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you later.